So let's get started. As a manager, Bullhorn has a number of standard reports for you to run to gather useful data about your employees' activity, as well as functions such as exporting to Excel. Now, you can access the standard reports from the Bullhorn menu under menu here. Here we go. So let's get into the menu. I'm going to scroll down and you want to hop into tools, tools folder there, and jump into reporting. Okay, so what you'll see is you'll see um, a standard reports menu and you want to expand that. Once you've expanded that, you'll see a series of reports that have been assigned to yourself. And with the, within these um, standard reports, there are a few, there are a number of standard reports um, here, but we won't go through each one. What I'm going to do is go through um, about, say, three common standard reports. So first, let's take a look at the job activity report. So I'm going to click this in a moment, but this report allows you to track recruiting and sales activity for new and open jobs that yourself or other users, um, if you're managing um, consultants, you're a team leader or a manager, and you want to see what they're up to, you can do that here. So let's click run. So before you actually see any data, you have to define the criteria in this criteria tab here. If you don't pick an activity date range, Bullhorn defaults uh, the, re the report to only show data from the previous week. So if you don't actually specify a reporting period, it will just give you data from the previous week. So you have some options here. You can choose from some defaults here, or you can go ahead and select a date range. Now, I'm going to just hop in here and let's select year to date, seeing as it's only um, the first month of the year. So let's do year to date. Let's scroll down. So as you'll see here, there's a number of options. Um, and to only show job activity from within your department, you can select that. So you can just say my department. Or you can go ahead and um, choose a specific um, a client, sorry, or job owner. So you're able to filter your results based on, uh, on, on the criteria here. Now, I'm just going to keep it quite broad. So um, for demonstration purposes, you can see an overview of what kind of results you should be getting. So I'm going to just scroll down and I'm just going to hop in to generate report here. OK, so once um, the results are displayed here, some of you, because we're using Chrome, some of you may see this uh, click to enable Adobe Flash Player pop up. So what you want to do is you want to click that. So once you run the Flash Player, it allows you to see um, the graph. Now, this may reload the site, which is fine. Um, it's just going to refresh the whole page and I'm going to just jump back into the report. So I deliberately wanted to show you that this is what happens. So don't worry if it happens to you and you just go back into the report. And this only happens once while you're in the report. So you don't have to keep doing it over and over again. So this will only happen for you once. And it, it happens for me quite a few times. Well, it happens for me because I'm in the incognito mode. Um, as you're you know, on Bullhorn, you won't be in incognito mode. You'll just be in normal mode and it will, be, um, it will work smoothly for you there. Okay. So hopping back in to generate reports so we can get a, an idea of what you need to, of what kind of data is here. Okay, so there you go. There's our lovely flash player with the lovely graphs. Scrolling down, what you're able to see here is the first row in any standard report, report is going to uh, be your department. So this is the departments here. In this example, um, we can see that we've got Boston and London. In order to actually access the data under those rows, we need to expand out those rows. So let's have a look at, say, um, Boston. So I'm just going to briefly run through some of these columns here. So jobs are jobs. Now, number of positions means the number of um, openings for a particular role, which so this number could be greater than the actual jobs that you have there because you could have multiple um, openings for a role. 
just scrolling across here you guys know what these mean I hope <laughs> so now we've got hires and starts so hires and starts both refer to the placement the placement form so a hire being the actual creation of the placement record so as soon as you put a placement record on that is the hire and the start will count it from the placement status of being approved now in order to drill down into the activity for each salesperson again we go ahead and expand out the information here so jessica has only one job there so again this report you can see there's layers and you can drill down into the, da the data even more so we can see exactly what company that one job was for what type it was and the corresponding data against it now my screen's a little bit small here so i'm scrolling but um you you won't need to scroll across on your screen there depending on your resolution okay so this is a job activity report and this report gives you data against the salesperson meaning the job owner all right guys so moving on i'm going to jump into the placement activity report so we don't need to go back or anything always use the menu items here so going back into reporting here and we want to jump into the placement activity report okay so as you can see you know the report has a very similar criteria page but obviously some of the fields that some of the criteria fields are a little bit different because this is to do with the placement so let's try and pick a custom date range this time so i'm gonna just go back from say the first of december uh, i'm gonna go ahead in the future to let's say the end of this month um and i'm gonna actually filter by department this time and I think um, let's do Boston, only because Boston has a large amount of data that I can show you. So there's various options here that you can run the report by. So start date of the placement, date added, end date, active during report period. What is this? This is if you want to see how many uh, how many placements are currently live. So this is good for kind of contract roles and see how many people are out working at the moment. So just scrolling a little bit down now, you can see that there is an employment type that you can select from. Now I'm just gonna keep it, um, if you do not select any of these options, it will give you everything. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna keep it blank there. And the placement status. Now, in this case, I only want to return data for placements that have been submitted and for placements that have been approved. And I'll explain why in a moment. So let's hit generate report. I'm hitting generate report and this is going to open up just in the web page. Perfect. Now, if you don't get any results, you don't need to go back. You just jump back into, you just click onto the criteria and go ahead and put the result, uh, change the criteria around to get results. But we're good. We've got some results here. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to, we can see the overview of the column, of each column. Just going to open up Boston department there. And what you'll see here is this report shows you revenue information, bill and pay rate information, as well as spread. Scrolling across slowly for you so you can see that. And margin for the placements that meet our criteria. Okay. So just give you a quick overview there. So I know I don't want to make your eyes go all fuzzy. Let's go back here. <laughs> all right. So as you can see, we can see more details about each placement, including the placement ID number there, the status it's at, um, the company, the contact, and also um, the candidate name as well. If you can just see on the right hand side, I'm not going to scroll again. It makes your eyes go fuzzy. So you can see that there. And there's so much more detailed financial information about this placement. Um, if you if I hadn't mentioned already, the blue text all always links back to the given record. So, for example, if I went to click on Paul Stanley here, that's the contact. It will take me to Paul Stanley's contact record, which will be the orange one in Bullhorn. 
Um, let me click. Let me click into Gene Simmons here. It's uh, important because it's the candidate. So as you can see, it's just going to open up the candidate record here. All right. Let's go back there. So returning back to the report, the placement activity report is useful to you as the manager. Oh, as a team leader, um, as you can, you know, for example, review the placements that are still in a submitted stage. So if you just scroll down, you can see these submitted placements and particularly the submitted placements with, say, an impending start date. And you can see that as we go across here to see, well, why is, you know, what's the hold up? Um, why is there an impending start date? Uh, don't worry about that error that just happened. Don't worry, that's just because I'm in a I'm in a kind of a training mode, so that's not going to happen for you. <laughs> I need to get that sorted. Um, any zeros you see um, across here, you know, they're potential cause for a second look. So before you want to send this across to um, the, the finance team or anything, it's best for you to have a look maybe week daily or weekly um, to say, well, okay, why are there some financial information missing, especially if it's a, a contract role? Um, why are the fees missing? For example, this Gene Simmons candidate has been placed for a contract role, but there are no fees. Um, if it's a permanent role, then why is the salary not in? So, you know, again, you want to be catching this stuff before it's sent out to finance and to payroll to process because you want to make sure there's no um, data that's kind of skewing the report as such. Okay, right, going back into reporting, I'm gonna go and jump into one more report, which is the source effectiveness report. So the source effectiveness report, you may have seen this report, but you may not know, really know what it does. Um, I think it's a really useful report. What it does is, I'm just gonna click run now. It allows you to evaluate the effectiveness of your, um, of your team's recruiting sources in order to kind of determine, am I getting you know, my best bang for my buck? If I said that right, um, you know, getting your money's worth, getting your return on your investment from the sources that you're paying. So these sources refer to like LinkedIn, um, external job boards. Who are you paying in order to get candidates into your system for these roles? And are you getting that money back by placing them? So how do you do that? How do you find that information out even? So let's do, um, let's, t let's use a longer reporting period because only year to date would only be like, you know, this month. So I'm just gonna hop in here and I'm gonna do a couple of months just to show you what this report looks like, especially if you haven't used it before. Um, and let's just do today. And again, you know, you're able to go ahead and choose what you, um, you know, filter on the criteria needed. Um, now, what I want to show you is you can hop in here and export data. So you're probably wondering, well, what are all these? What does export level mean? So export level applies to extracting uh, extracting data into Excel. So you can choose candidate summary, placement detail, candidate detail, and report that into Excel. Now, you're able to pull data into Excel from any of the reports I've shown you already. But for this pur for purposes of demonstration, I'm just going to show you this in the web page and then I'm going to show you the data in Excel in a moment. Um, sorry, just here above in source, you can choose a particular source. If you've got a review coming up, if you've got a contract renewal coming up with LinkedIn, say, for example, or Monster, um, then you can just choose that particular source to see the data or um, you can just leave it blank so it will bring back all the sources. All right, so this is looking good. I love it when reports give me lots of data. <laughs> so this shows, again, where are you getting, you know, placements? Where are you making placements? Uh, and we can see here, LinkedIn is number one again. So you've made seven placements with LinkedIn and you've had 25 candidates come through. Out of those 25 candidates, seven have been placed. So, you know, from here, from, from the number of candidates coming in, it also, um, segregates that data to say, well, how many candidates from that total amount of new candidates were submitted, um, where the CVs were sent, how many interviews were made, and ultimately, 
how many placements were made. So this data is quite imperative, especially when it does come to those, you know, renegotiations with your partners. Now, this is just an overview, as you can see in the web page. I want to show you what this looks like in Excel. So I'm just going to go into criteria again. And I don't need to start putting the dates in or anything. It's remembered everything. All I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this up a little bit. I'm going to go into say so we know there were seven placements made by linkedin right so i'm going to narrow this down a little bit and do placement detail because i want to see well those placements those seven placements made from linkedin what are they and i can do that by exporting this data into excel so let's try that out unformatted excel generate report all right so let's view that file decided to open on this screen. One moment. There we go. So you can see there's these placements that were made with LinkedIn and the exact data corresponding to that placement. So the great thing about that is, you know, you can ex export it into Excel. You can manipulate the data, you can make it more kind of um, uh, presentation friendly for your meetings, for your check-ins, um, so you could do that there. All right, so I'm just going to close out of that. So we've already been through the job activity report, um, the placement activity report, and the source effectiveness report. One more report I'd like to show you, let's just add one more into the mix, which I think is quite, is, is extremely useful, is called the recruiting activity report. Now I'm showing you this one because it's different from the job activity report. The job activity report gives credit to the job owners. The recruiting activity report allows you to see the um, hiring process activity such as pre-screens, um, CV sends, interviews and hires. So it gives credit to the person who is actually conducting the activity. I'll show you what I mean. Right, so again, let's just do um, year to date. Again, you know, the criteria page looks the same. So one thing I want to call out on this particular report, recruiting activity report, is who are you interested, who, who does the work in your business? So activity author means I may not own that candidate, but I'm still putting activity against that candidate, so I need to get credit for that. So I think 90% or 99% of our clients use Activity Author. There may be that 1% of our clients who um, solely have candidates that they own, maybe a larger percentage actually, I may be wrong there, but what I'm trying to explain is that the candidate owner is the person that who owns that candidate and they should be getting credit. Even if they're not putting activity on it, they'll still get the credit because they own that candidate. So it's up to you which one you'd like to use depending on your business. But I would say activity also, so we're not you know, missing anyone out and we're making sure everyone gets activity, um, everyone gets credit for the activity that they're doing on the system. And again, this is great for your, one, your, you know, your weekly one-to-ones with your consultants, um, reviews, whether they be quarterly or annually, you want to be using this report to do that. Okay, let's just generate that report. And here we have our lovely charts. So these um, charts are based on department. As you can see, we've got a few more departments here um, because there's been more activity against the departments. So when you are running any of our standard reports and you find that there's a department missing as such if it's not there that's because there's been there has been no activity against that department which is why it's not appearing in the report so again as you can see if i click into boston let's do london actually let's mix it up a bit in london we've got eight pre-screens 21 submissions you can see the overall totals i can see that alan and morel have been busy um alan's been a little bit more busy than morel so let's go to alan's record and expand that again. And then we'll say, well, ooh, well, those seven pre-screens, what were they? Well, here they are, these were the seven pre-screens. 19 submissions, well, what were they? Here they are, and so on. Okay. 
Right. Just, okay, so those are the kind of most common standard reports that I would recommend you use. Um, you don't really have to use the standard reporting feature in Bullhorn to get the data you want. Um, you know, you can go into um, the lists, as you know, when you are in the lists views, you can create reports that way as well. So, um, because the reason why I'm, I'm saying this is because the standard reports cannot be customized, they're standard. So if you do need something a little bit extra, you want to remove something, you can go into your list views excuse me, you can go into your list views and um, customize your columns and then export that data. So let me give you a quick example of how to do that. Let's hop into menu and I'm going to go into the placements entity here. And what I'm going to do is, um, as you know, you can use the columns drop down here. So, in the columns, you can select data that columns you wish to see and not see. So, I'm going to add in, I've got employment type. I'm going to add in employment type. Okay, let's save that. And what I want to see is, I want to see contract placements. You could switch this to perm. Um, any column you add, you know, any new column you add always appears on the far right hand side. So if you don't want it there, you could just drag and drop it any way you want. So that's contract. I'm also going to filter on the status. I want to see approved contract placements. Approved contract placements. And I want to see some start dates. Um, so let's have a look at the start date. I want to see start dates in the future. Perfect. So I think it's already picked that up. Okay, that is a way away in the future, but that works. Okay, so I will then select these records. I mean, I've only got three, but if I had, if it said select all 100 records, I would select all 100 or so on. And I'll go to the selected action button here, and under actions, I can export a CSV. Now, only admins should have access to export data, and I'm sure you've got this already set up. If you are an admin and you don't have a, and you don't have access to export CSV data, and you do want it, then contact support, and they can help you with that. All right. Uh, so let's see. Let's go export that there. And again, if you need to use these, this data in, in your presentations, um, if you're doing yearly presentations, you need to have this information. It's quite basic in the way it's um, you know, displayed here because it's a CSV format. So you can go ahead and add you know, pivot tables, whatever kind of crazy Excel um, whizzy stuff you need to do in there to make it more presentable for yourself. Okay, now I know we've covered quite a lot of um, content today. So if you do have um, any questions after the after the session, um, or you're not sure, um, you don't remember what I what I talked about, you can go into help, and you can click into our community section. So if you're ever in doubt and you need help, you're not sure what a particular feature or function, uh, what a particular feature does in Bullhorn, you can ask away in our Bullhorn Google or like, or as I like to call it, Google, and <laughs> type in standard reports. And this is the landing page for the Understanding Bullhorn Standard Reports. So this page will have everything that I've just covered today. Um, and if you really want to get into it, it will show you exactly where each field is pulled from, from the database. So go crazy there. All right, guys, I really hope you've enjoyed the webinar and I will pass it over to Sarah. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Nimisha. We actually got a bunch of great questions, so I'm going to run through as many as we can in the next five minutes or so. Um, our first question is, on the job activity report, does the submissions does the submission column include web responses? Okay, so on the job activity report, let's just hop back in there. Does the submissions column 
contain web responses? Was that the question? Just to double check. Yes, on the job activity report, does uh -huh. the submission column include web responses? Right, okay, so web responses is separate. Um, web responses is a section itself and the answer is no. Submissions are um, the submissions that you make to the role um, manually. So submissions or shortlists as we call them here in EMEA. Awesome, our next question is, is the source effectiveness report looking at submission source or candidates original source? Great question. It is the candidate's um, original source. So um, make sure that you are capturing that information on the candidate record source field. Okay. Uh, next question is, can you get actual uh, dollar or pound values from the source effectiveness reports? Um, they Okay, so with this, that would be just the currency that you define in your um, on your system um, and it would just be if it's pounds it would just be in pounds um, and that, that will pick up from the placement itself the placement okay. detail and our next question is does the interview show the number for current pending interviews I'm not sure which report that's for oh sorry that's for the recruiting activity report recruiting activity report so the interviews what was, can you repeat the question, sorry? Yep, it was, does the interview show the number for current pending interviews? Ah, right, it will show the interviews that have been have taken place in the date range specified. Great, uh, next question is, how do you decide when it's best to get info via report or first dashboards? Ah, great question. Um, so, yeah, so the reports, it, yes, yeah, so, I mean, have a look at the reports. If you're, if you're not getting the data you want from the reports, dashboards are more kind of real-time information, whereas, um, you know, you need it straight away. Um, we're going to be covering dashboards in another webinar, so definitely sign up for the next one, um, and I'll be going into more detail on dashboards there. Um, with regards to the reporting, it's more kind of a longer-term a longer period or if you need something specific I would say look at the standard reports whereas dashboards are kind of quick glance quick info needed hope that helps okay and how to request bullhorn to write additional standard reports right okay so if uh, if you'd like a particular enhancement um, or feature request made to our reports um, if you go into the community section there is a, uh, an area where you can submit your um, suggestion um, if, the, if you would like us to create a new report feel free to um, go ahead and so, yeah put your suggestion in and that will go straight through to the product team who will be in touch with you great um, so I'm actually going to end the Q&A there um, for any questions that we didn't have time to get to, we will follow up via email. So just look for those in your inbox. Um, and as a reminder, we will also be sharing the recording from today with everyone who registered within the next 24 hours or so. Um, for any additional training resources, don't forget to log into the learning hub that Nimisha showed you all at, on the customer community. That's at help.bullhorn.com. Thank you everyone and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, bye.